Welcome to step five, cash flow settings, part of our seven easy steps process. What I want to do now is take you through the cash flow settings in Calxa Premier. And for most people, we don't think this will be an onerous task. The default settings will do exactly what you need. But if you need to make some modifications, here's how you do it. So select cash flow settings on the toolbar. And you'll see here all, all our accounts. And each account has a cash flow type. So profile, none, schedule, day to days, etc. Let's have a look at some of those. So if we start with debt, with one of our income accounts, income accounts default to debtor days. And that calculation is based on your outstanding debtors compared to your annual sales, and it works out a profile of how that will be received over the coming months. Now, if you want to change it manually, you can. Just go to cash flow type there and select profile. And then for the current month, let's put in 20%. We can use our up and down arrows to adjust those percentages as well as the mouse. And as you adjust each month, you'll notice it automatically adjusts the next one so that the total adds up to 100. If we were to take month four now and change it to 25%, you'll see that it takes that from month five and three and then the balance from month two. So we always make sure that we're going to receive 100% of the sales that we've invoiced. Now, we can do multiple accounts at once, and I just held down shift here, or you can use control to select individual accounts. As long as they're all the same account type, you can modify them in bulk. Now, purchases, so cost of sales accounts, expense accounts, default to creditor days. So same basic principle, calculates it based on the outstanding creditors, looks at your purchases over the past 12 months, and works out a profile for you. Again, if you want to do that manually yourself, you can change it to profile and edit it. But for most people, we think that the system calculated option will do what you need. Now, if we have a look at some other expense accounts here, wages and salaries, for example, the cash flow type there defaults to wages tax with a tax rate of 25%. So that's calculating the amount of tax that's withheld from wages. So in your payroll system, you can calculate that by taking the total amount of tax withheld, dividing it by the gross wages, and that will give you a percentage. And if you do that over a long period of time, you'll get a better average. If we take our superannuation expense, you'll see the cash flow type for that has been set to none. That's because we manage the payment of superannuation through the liability account superannuation payment account, payables account, sorry. So if we go and find that, we'll see that's got a cash flow type of schedule. And the default there is quarterly superannuation. You can change that to a different schedule. And if you want more information on those schedules, click on either the, click on the cash flow schedules button in the toolbar, and for some training on how, how it works, have a look at step four of this series, set tax timing. Now, our depreciation accounts default to none, 
because there's no cash flow effect of a depreciation transaction. In this particular file, you'll see the depreciation expense accounts have an unusual abbreviation for depreciation. Therefore, the system hasn't picked them up as being none. So we just need to change those manually. You'll see that wages and salaries is still pink until we click save all and then all our accounts are saved. And that's all there is to the cash flow settings. So if you need to make some changes, they're fairly simple to do. Thank you for listening. And I suggest now you have a look at step six, which is about producing a cash flow forecast chart. Thank you.